Okay, so we are back with another what I ate in a day to lose weight, but this time I wanted to put a bit more of an emphasis on what I actually did in terms of how I reduced my calories, because if you've not seen any of my other videos, I didn't calorie count. In fact, I honestly didn't even know what a calorie was. I just made simple changes and switches and really reduced portion sizes as well. And so I never cut anything specific out. I still ate anything that I wanted to, but I found some sneaky little ways to adapt meals and quite enjoyable ways to make the process a lot easier. So a very, very quick recap of weight loss principles. You need to be in a calorie deficit, which just means you need to be consuming less calories than your body is actually burning. Now, when I went to lose weight, I had a significant amount of weight to lose. And not only that, but I had very bad eating habits and I was having huge portions as well. So I actually didn't need to make any crazy changes to be able to start to see progress. Now, obviously the more weight I lost, I had to be a little bit more mindful of what I was doing. But initially these things were so useful and I want to show you how easy you can just adapt your meals and not have to overthink being in a calorie deficit. So first let's talk about the best part of my day which is breakfast and for breakfast I was kind of set in my ways. I like to have sweet things and I tend to like having a bigger breakfast as well but one thing that I really enjoyed is pancakes but I knew that they were quite calorie dense and I thought there must be a way to make these a little bit healthier. So I hit up Google and I found tons of recipes and this is basically what I did with a lot of meals that I didn't really wanna give up, I still wanted to incorporate, I just found ways to make them a little bit less calorie dense. And you can literally do this for any meal. So noodle dishes, you can do it for pies, pizzas. Honestly, the options are endless. And so I'm gonna show you the recipe that I use, but like I say, there are so many different ones if you wanna check them out for yourself as well. So let's head over to breakfast. All right, so you're gonna need a whisk for this recipe. I'm gonna use an electric one, but you can totally do this by hand as well. And you're just gonna crack one egg and some sweetener or some flavoring. So it could be vanilla essence, but I'm gonna use these Flav Drops. My boyfriend bought them for me and I'm low-key obsessed with them at the moment. So I've added those and I'm just gonna whisk these until the egg is fluffy. All right, that is looking good. So we're gonna grab out some yogurt. I'm gonna use some coconut yogurt just cause I don't eat dairy at the moment, but you can use Greek yogurt or just normal plain yogurt as well. And I'm gonna add just two tablespoons of this. Finally, I'm just gonna sieve over three tablespoons of flour and it's gonna mix that together. And then of course you've got to add something in there. I wanted to add chocolate chips, but I didn't have any. So I just ended up adding some raisins this time because still a pretty good choice. And that is your batter done. So I'm just gonna oil a pan. I'm just gonna use the spray oil because it's easier, but you can add butter or whatever you have. And then I'm gonna make four pancakes. Oh, and this recipe is enough for one person. I forgot to mention that. All right, and now it is time to serve up. So I'm just gonna stack those on a plate and I'm gonna add some coconut yogurt today, but you could add any yogurt or ice cream or whatever you really fancy. There's some low calorie ice creams. I'm putting some bananas, some extra raisins, cause why not? And a little bit of honey and cinnamon. And there we have it. Some nice and easy breakfast pancakes. And like I said, what I love about this recipe so much is that you can literally put any flavors and tastes delicious. All right, so let's move on to lunch. Now, another thing that I would do other than just adjusting a recipe that I already liked was I reduced portion sizes. I was very used to having huge, like huge portions, um, doubles. I would always have seconds. I would always have a dessert at dinner and usually have a side as well and a soft drink on top of that. So that's what I was used to. So a very easy thing for me to do was just adjust how much I was actually eating. So for lunches, I would usually have a baguette or a sandwich, some crisps or something like that because I was working full time, I was in the city, it was always easy, cheap and available and it tastes pretty good as well, let's 
be honest. So what I did was just start taking my own version. So I'm gonna show you how I reduced the portions from what I would have had to what I started having. And you'll notice that it's not a huge difference, but it was significant enough to obviously incorporate into my day and reduce my calories overall. I am very aware that nowadays things like bagel thins and thin breads also exist. I'm just a carb lover. Honestly, it makes up a huge part of my diet, so they just aren't gonna cut it. And the thing that I find is, if I was to have a bagel thin, I just don't feel satisfied, and I always end up going and having something else to eat afterwards. So for me, it was important, I found out, to just make sure I still have a decent meal. And that meant that I didn't feel the need to go back and eat some more food, or I feel like I was being restricted either. So we're gonna head to lunch now, and I'm gonna show you what I would have eaten. Okay, so typically this is what I would have eaten before. So it's gonna be a demi baguette roll with some mayonnaise, of course some margarine, a heap of salad, some tomato, onion, and lettuce, and then whatever filling it was. It would usually be, at the time, ham and cheese or just ham. And this is what I switched it out for. So I would have instead gone for a wholemeal or a rye roll, and I just found that these have a little bit more fiber and they felt more filling, but also, obviously, it was a little bit smaller. Instead of the mayonnaise, I went for some mustard and everything else was exactly the same. It's just that the fillings weren't as big. I'd still have plenty of stuff in that sandwich and it's as simple as that. Now, I don't know about you, but I am a snacker. I'm all about that snack life. I would rather just graze all day on small little bits rather than have three big meals if I had a choice. I mean, I'd rather have both. But snacks wise, I really didn't know what I was doing. So before I would be having things like the healthy choices, orange juice, granola bars, that sort of stuff. But I didn't realize just how calorie dense they were. So again, like I did with breakfast, I started switching them out for things that still satisfied the taste and the cravings that I wanted, but they were a little bit better options. So a really great one that I found was, and you're gonna have to bear with me with this one because it might not sound great until you've tried it, but I love salt and vinegar. Like, I love it. Maybe it's the Brit in me, but I just love that flavoring. And I used to love like salt and vinegar crisps or anything like that. The thing I find is that they're just not filling. So I was eating it and I wouldn't feel satisfied and I would always want a little bit more. But I found a recipe once for roasted chickpeas, salt and vinegar chickpeas. I'll show you the recipe in a second, but it is so cheap to make these and they are delicious. And not only that, but they fill you up so much. And I feel like I'm someone who has a big appetite, but even after eating a handful of these, I am stuffed. So they are a fantastic snack. So we're gonna head over there in a second and I'm gonna show you how I made those. But obviously there are tons of different flavor combos that you can use. But that being said, with snacks, being the type of person that I was, I didn't really want to mess with them too much because I found that if I didn't have something, kind of like with lunch, if I didn't have something that I enjoyed, I just ended up wanting it even more. So there was no point in restricting it. So if it wasn't close enough, I would still have what I wanted, but I was just mindful of how much I was eating. But if I could find a less calorie dense version, which felt like it was very similar or just as good, then I would definitely be going for that option. Okay, so salt and vinegar roasted chickpeas, such a good recipe. You're just gonna grab yourself a tin of chickpeas from the supermarket and you're gonna whack them on a paper towel and just try to dry out as much of the excess moisture as possible. Once you've done that, you're gonna throw them in a roasting pan and you're just gonna add a little bit of olive oil, around a tablespoon is fine, some salt and some pepper and give it a good old mix and throw it in the oven at about 200 degrees Celsius for around 20 to 25 minutes. Three minutes before the end, you're just gonna take them out and add some red wine vinegar and toss it in, and you should have something like this. I like to just throw them in a bowl and then I can snack on them throughout the day, but they also make a really good addition to salads too. Oh, and of course, because it's me, I'm adding some seasoning. So I'm just gonna add some oregano and there you have it. 
Okay, so probably my second favorite part of the day is dinner time. And this is probably the biggest meal of the day for me. This is when I was having that dessert and I was having the soft drinks and I was having the sides. I'd have like two big bowls of pasta. I would have half a garlic bread. It seems crazy to me now that I felt like that was a normal meal, but it was at the time. And don't get me wrong, I could definitely still eat it. I just don't know if I'd enjoy it every single night. But anyway, because I was used to eating big portions, I still wanted to keep that volume up. Up, so I felt like I was fulfilled and I didn't feel like I had to go back and snack so I pushed my meals slightly later so I wasn't just sitting around thinking about hunger or food or anything like that and what I did was start to incorporate less calorie dense but more nutrient dense foods and more voluminous foods into my dinners now more volume and nutrient dense tends to be vegetables and luckily I love vegetables. So with any meal, I would basically just have it with a salad on the side, or I would have it with some roasted vegetables or boiled vegetables. For example, spaghetti bolognese, I would half the noodles and I would have some broccoli instead. And I was just as full. And in fact, the broccoli with the tomato sauce tastes amazing. If I was having curry, I would also add in some like mange too, or I would have some cauliflower with it, whatever it might be, and just have a little bit less rice. And the example that I'm gonna show you is pad thai. So a nice, healthy pad thai recipe, but what I did is for myself, I will mix in some extra broccoli and have a little bit less of the noodles. And then everyone else who is eating it can still have noodles. So this is a fantastic way if you're cooking for other people, so a partner or a family member, or even if you've got kids, that you can be cost effective. You don't have to cook separate meals, but you can still work towards your goals at the same time. Eating in a calorie deficit is not one size fits all. That's what I really learned. And it's just about what works best for you. All right, that being said, let's head to this Pad Thai recipe. It's a good one. Okay, so dinner time. So for this dish, you're gonna need some protein. I'm gonna use some chicken and some prawns. You're also gonna need some rice noodles, some rice wine vinegar, some soy sauce, some greens to bulk it out, some eggs, ginger, garlic, and maybe a few other household items. So you're gonna put your chicken or whatever you're using as your protein in to cook. You could use tofu or literally anything that you fancy. You're also gonna pop your noodles on and also your broccoli or greens. And in a bowl, you're gonna add your egg and a little bit of salt and just mix that up. In a separate bowl, you can add your rice wine vinegar, your soy sauce, some brown sugar, and you're gonna mix that up as well. Finally, just gonna mix your ginger, your garlic, and I got a spring onion and just chop that up as well. Top tip, scissors make everything so much easier. All right, once everything is finished cooking, I'm just gonna use the same pan. I think technically you're meant to use a wok, but this works great. And I'm just going to throw the ginger and garlic mixture in and just give it a little heat up. After a couple of minutes, you're gonna throw the egg mixture in as well. And what you want to basically do is just keep moving this around the pan until it starts to crisp up and burn a little bit. Just keep breaking it up because you want it to be in little chunks if possible. And then once you've got to the point where it started to brown, you're gonna add your protein back in. Now in this example, I'm just making this dish for myself. So I'm gonna add my greens in, but if you're cooking for somebody else, you could just leave those out and add them to your plate separately. I'm gonna add the noodles and also the soy sauce dressing that we made, and I'm just gonna mix it all together. You can also throw some bean sprouts in, but I forgot to buy some. <laughs> And that is the dish done. So I'm just gonna serve up my portion here. This total recipe yields two servings. So I'm gonna save myself half for later. But for now, I'm just gonna throw it in a bowl, add a few extra prawns, cause why not? A little bit of chili flakes and a lime wedge and we are done. All right, with dinner done, that takes us to the last part of the day, which is dessert time. And I didn't mess with my desserts. I love chocolate. And so I kept it in there. I didn't wanna restrict it because like I said, if I restricted it and stopped myself from having it, eventually I knew that would just lead to me overeating it or just craving it so much and being unhappy. So I still had it, but I was really mindful of my portions. Sometimes I would switch it for dark chocolate, but more often I would just have what I liked and just only have a little bit. 
Now what really helped with my portion control was two things. The first one was I got into the habit of having it with a cup of herbal tea. So after dinner, I would always make myself a peppermint tea or a chamomile tea and I would have that with my chocolate. And additionally, I started buying smaller packets. So I started to buy the variety bags or the multiple pack ones. That meant I could have one portion which was separately wrapped and I knew that was my portion, I could enjoy it rather than having a big family size bar where I could just keep going and keep going and not even realize. So having those individually wrapped ones really, really helped, but also that habit of having the cup of tea with it was really, really useful. And I feel like I started to develop that knowledge of, okay, this is bedtime now, this is the last thing I'm gonna eat, enjoy it mindfully, and then go to bed. After a while, probably took about four to six weeks, I really, really enjoyed this part of the day. It was really relaxing to me and it became a habit that I loved. There is one more thing that I just want to touch on and that is liquid calories. Now I was crazy for liquid calories. Obviously I didn't really pay much attention to it before, but I was having soft drinks at dinner time and they weren't the zero variety, they were the full fat ones. And I was having a lot of that as well. So with those, I just switched them out for sparkling water with a hint of lemon or a hint of lime. I love sparkling water now. It was a bit of a weird one at first. I was like, it's not quite the same, but I really, really enjoyed it. So that's a fantastic switch for me. And obviously that's a significant amount of calories, but also my coffees. So I would be having several coffees throughout the day, which were milky lattes, like full fat milk, and I was having three sugars, which seems crazy to me now. And I would, for the most part, switch those out for black coffee or Americanos with a little bit of milk and no sugar. But I slowly and gradually decreased them. It wasn't like cold turkey. I started by decreasing the sugar slightly and then I started to reduce to an Americano, but I would still have a milky latte every now and again as well. Obviously, again, just to keep me sane. So that is what my day would have looked like. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and that you got some good recipe ideas. If you did try any of them, be sure to let me know down below because I would love to hear your thoughts. Or if you have any of your own tips and tricks, then feel free to pop them down below because I know a lot of people read the comments and I do too. More importantly, I hope this video has given you an idea of potentially how you can optimize your meals if you're in a calorie deficit and how you don't have to restrict or be living a miserable life. You can still have what you enjoy and reach your goals at the same time. All right guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.